All right. We are now finishing a beautiful mimer said by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe on Yud Beit Tammuz. That that's today. That's today's date. We're living with the times. Yud Beit Tammuz. Yud Beit Tammuz, but it was 1927. It's on page uh, 350. No, no. 364. <clears throat> All right, King David. Who is King David? King David... <clears throat> he wrote Psalms, right? The book of Psalms. And the book of Psalms contained many, 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 many very, very deep mysteries. But even more, it contains many very personal lessons in how to serve the creator of the universe. How to serve the creator of the universe. And Judaism has is based on this idea of serving the creator of the universe, Avodat Hashem. <coughs> the first person to really do this was Abraham, he was the first person to do what's called Avodat Hashem, serving God and not serving himself, having no care whatsoever for himself, only, his only interest is to serve the creator. And of course, the creator is interested in ourselves. That's why he created us. The creator is very good. That's what Judaism teaches. We, we believe anyway. And that's the hard thing. Is that Even though there is a world, and the world sends us clear, crystal clear messages that God does not exist, that God is not good, that God doesn't care, that God doesn't know, that, that if there is God, that he's mean, doesn't keep his promises, makes people suffer. But nevertheless, the Jews, especially the, what we call the tzaddikim, these are people that they believe that it's not so. They, they, they feel that even though externally there might be really bad things going on, as, but internally it's all for a very, very deep and wonderful and good purpose that will only be revealed in this world with the coming of the Mashiach and the raising of the dead. Now you might say that this is a little bit what they call, how do they say, Pollyannic. Pollyanna, I think there's a word like that. Ah, everything is good, you know, what me worry, you know, Alfred E. Newman, everything's going to be okay. <clears throat> so it might look like that on the outside, but that's the founder of Judaism. The founder of Judaism was a person exactly like that. And it wasn't that he wasn't aware of what was going on, he was very aware. In fact, he was super, super aware. He was aware that the world is a creation and that it's being directed by a creator and the creator wants partners. Why the creator decided he wants partners? <clears throat> That's the creator. Why he created the world? Why the creator, what the creator is? Who has any idea? But... We have a, an ability to serve the Creator. We are just creations. We are just creations. And we're being created constantly, every instant, <clears throat> by a Creator who is infinitely, infinitely good. And we want to reveal this good. A lot of times we see what is the alternative to such thinking. Well, you look, just look at the enemies of the Jews. The enemies of the Jews. What <clears throat> they want what, they're, what type of world are they looking for? The enemies of the Jews, the Romans, the, the Babylonians. You know, what type of morals, what type of values do they have? Even the other religions, you know, what do they stress? You know, the Christians, the, what do they want? Oh, the world to come, the world to come, the world to come. What about this world? What about making this world a beautiful? What about feeling God's presence and making this world a beautiful world. What, what about that? So, <clears throat> not, not, not for me. What Hitler wanted, what Stalin wanted, what these people had, followers, enthusiastic, there's no, right, what did the 
the, uh, the atheists, what type of world do they want? You know, what type of world does John Paul Sartre and, and these people, what, are they, what, are they, what type of world do they want to be? You know, everyone just does what they want. And so, okay, you know, maybe you like that, but I don't like it. So there's a lot of other people that don't. And deep, deep down inside, every Jew wants a world that's perfect according to the Creator's standards. And the prime example of this is King David. King David suffered from the day that he was born until the day that he died. All he had was enemies. All he had was enemies. From the first day that he was born, his father didn't want him. He was put, put out into the fields. <coughs> he was the son of what they say, a maidservant. And the last day that he was there, his son, his son uh, what was his name? Uh, I don't know who made a big war against him, tried to take away the kingship. And Absalom before that tried to take away the kingship. And he had enemies. His best friends turned on him. King David, and all the time he was running around. So David won all of his battles. And one of the prayers that he said, and this is something like the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe was also, uh, had a lot of enemies. A lot of his enemies were the other rabbis. And the Rebbe said he didn't want to talk about it. When he was in Poland, he was very well hated by a lot of the other rabbis. Disliked. And um, when he came to America, the same thing. You know, there were big rabbis that really spoke very strongly against him, said very slanderous things against him. To this day, these slanders are believed. And... Um, <coughs> the, the Rebbe was, the, the previous Rebbe, Lubavitcher Rebbe was put into prison... And he was put into prison by Jews. And he was sentenced to death and miraculously he got out on Yud Beis Tammuz. The sufferings that he had were similar to those of King David. King David said a sentence that really sort of rings true for the previous Rebbe. And he said, Hashem Liba Ozrai, God is one of my helpers. And I'll see revenge on my enemies. And the Rebbe said, listen, uh, you know, I, I know what the King David was talking about. I also needed God to help me, and he did help me. But what did King David mean that God was one of my helpers? I mean, we're Jews. Jews believe that everything comes from God. Like, like we said before, true, if somebody helps you, you have to give them thanks, you have to thank a person, you have to be, you know, but you have to know that this person helped you because God sent them to help you. True people have free will, and they can choose on their own, and for that everybody deserves thanks and reward and etc but nevertheless in the end really God is doing everything that's our message how can King David say that I had a lot of helpers and God was one of them and another question is how could King David say I will see the revenge on my enemies revenge is forbidden to take revenge King David should have prayed like Rabbi Meir there's a Gomorrah of Rabbi Meir in Brachas that Rabbi Meir said uh, that he wanted his, his, his neighbors, he had neighbors, terrible neighbors, that used to make him terrible trouble. And they were evil people. And he said that they should, they should be, I say, wiped out, his en enemies. They were his enemies that they should be gone. And his wife said, you don't pray for that. You pray that the, their sins should be gone. Not that they should be gone. Here. Oh, got some good stuff. Home, homemade, homegrown. You have to say that their sins should be gone. Tamu chataim mina or it's velo achotim. That sins should be wiped out from the world, not the sinners. So King David didn't know that. King David certainly knew. But the whole purpose of the Jewish people is to transform the world, not to destroy the world, not to destroy our enemies. That our enemies should also recognize that there's a creator that's creating them, that loves them. They don't have to kill, steal. That's the way the world is going to be. That's, that's the ideal situation. And where everybody makes the right choices. So, maybe there's just people that can't change. Oh, maybe there are people that can't change. King David revealed it. Maybe, yes. But the Rebbe said, but you have to understand, some of these people that were with King David, they opposed him for the highest reasons. They were tremendous Talmud Chachamim. We talked about this before. There was Doag, Achitofel. It says Achitofel. He had a mind he could, that he knew exactly what the Urim and the Tumim would say. It's like prophecy. And Shimi Ben Gera was the head of Sanhedrin. These people were, were, were 
giants. So how could King David say that he wishes they were all destroyed? <clears throat> I'll see my enemies, I'll see them. So let's answer this. Here, let's go to the last paragraph. Hine, page 364. Hine, David, King David. You can close the door, you know. Let's, let's see if maybe if it really works. Oh, there, there we go. Okay. Hine. David. See where we are? Last paragraph. You have it? 6364. Hine. David. King David. Medregato. His level. What does it mean, his level? He, <coughs> he in his spiritual level. He embodied Sphira Tamalchut. God's kingship. What does it mean, God's kingship? We say a hundred times a day. We're supposed to say a hundred times a day. Melech Olam, the God is the king of the universe. What does it mean, God is the king of the universe? What does that mean, He's the king of the universe? We're saying that God creates everything, but He also rules over everything. Rules over everything means that He also enlivens everything. A king wants to benefit His people. A king wants to benefit His creation. That's what a good king is. Right? That was the... That was the thing of Napoleon. In the days of Napoleon, he said all the kings are bad. There's no such thing as divine right of rule. Kings are divinely inspired. Napoleon. And in France, it was really true. In France, the kings were really bad news. Right? They were really just decadent, corrupt people. And so, <clears throat> I, I went to France... Oh, it was a few, whatever it was, and, and they gave us a tour of the, what's it called, the, the, the big, uh, the palace in France, huh? Versailles. What? Versailles. The Versailles, palace of Versailles. And they showed these different rooms, they have like sort of statues in there, and the, the guide was like bragging about how corrupt and decadent the kings were, all of them were called Louis. <clears throat> Louis the five, Louis the fifth, Louis the seventh, Louis the eighth. How decadent and 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 terrible they were, and how they partied all the time. And, uh, and so Napoleon came along and he de de he deposed all the kings. Because a king is a bad thing. What's a king? A king rules over every aspect of everybody's life, and he can tell people to do things that they don't want to do. So if he's a good king, there's nothing better than that. Nothing better than a if there's a really good king. Because the people don't know. They don't know what they want to do. Look what's going on in America now. Look what there's, right? That was by, just, just as, as a parenthetical statement, why the founding fathers of America were very opposed <coughs> to democracy. Very opposed to democracy. America is a republic. It is not a democracy. Democracy, they said, is the worst form of government there can be. What is democracy? The people rule. The people make the decisions. So there's no one less uh, qualified to make decisions than the public. Democracy is something you have for like a small town. That's right, yeah, that's right. Then you need a government for like a city or a country. Doesn't work. Why? So what, what was the idea that the democracy, the, the, the America, I mean, it's a, dem a democratic country. It's called democratic. What does it mean democratic? That the people elect representatives. And these representatives are supposed to be representative according to certain values, certain principles. And they are supposed to be people who are men of principle. That they will, at all costs, represent these principles and keep these principles in action. And, and for These are men of, uh, of conscience. That they do what they're supposed to so that's ideally what's supposed to be, right? That there's supposed to be leaders that are qualified leaders. And these people, they lead the people. Well, the, the best, if you can have a king that really knows what the people need 
and he really is connected to the creator of the universe, the creator of the universe really wants for the benefit of everybody. Really wants the benefit of everyone. So that's the best government of all. That's the it represents God's kingship, God's creative powers. Look what God does. He creates all the world. It's pretty amazing. He's doing a pretty good job. God, we can't create anything. God is creating all these bugs and all these plants and all these, you know, all these things that the vegans love and that the, you know, the animal people, they, they say are more important to people. Well, I mean, the, they have a point because these things are really miracles, you know, chickens and cows and plants. And these, these are really very great miracles. Life is so precious. And it's so amazing. But who is creating it? God. God is creating it. That's what we believe. That's what it means God is a king. God is creating everything and he wants to benefit everything. He's controlling everything and he wants to benefit everything. And one of the biggest benefits he gives us is free will. We can do what we want. And even a bigger gift that God gave to us is responsibility. That we can use our, resp our free will responsibly. <clears throat> That's the idea of a, of a republic, right? I'm not coming to, to push the, the, these They elect responsible people. That's the word I was looking for. Responsible people. So the king, he's responsible. He controls everyone. But he's responsible for the people because he's responsible only to God. No one can tell him what to do. He's not influenced by anything. He's not afraid of anyone. Not afraid of anything. He's only afraid of the creator. Because the creator wants to do what's good. So if all the people stand up like they did with Moshe, right, and they said, we all want to worship the golden calf, we don't want to receive the Torah, we want to go back to Egypt, right, we don't like this, uh, this bread with this man that's falling from heaven, we don't, so Moshe said, it doesn't make any difference, this is what God wants, I'm standing against everybody. So they said, let's get rid of Moshe. Right? That, was, that was how Korach succeeded so well, because right? he did, they said, we don't want a king. But David was a king, and Mashiach will be a king. The Rambam says the Mashiach will be just like King David. King David was the first Messiah, and that the Mashiach Ben David, he'll be the last Messiah. Hine, David Medregaso was Firas Amalchus. David, he represented God's kingship. He wanted the, only the benefit of every single creation in his country, and, and uh, ideally, even the world. The Mashiach is going to be the whole world. The Kassiv, like it says, I need to feel up. King, King David was prayer. Bechinat malchu to tefillah. Because what do we say? Kingship is two different things. A Jewish king. Two opposites. On one hand, he's the king, the highest of all the people. He rules over everything. On the other, he's the most humble in front of God. He's totally dependent on God for everything, for every moment. This is the King David. He used to stay up until midnight learning Torah. And then... He would like drowse off almost until midnight. He would drowse off like for less than a few minutes at a time. And then he would wake up and sing songs to God. Praises to God. That's what Tehillim is. A lot of them is praises to God. Here's a king. You ever hear a king praising God? Getting once in a while the President of the United States says, you know, thank God. He says it once in a while. If you're, for, if you're lucky to hear it. What type of a king, a leader, praises God all the time? All the time. King, that was King David. He was a singer. He praised God. He's saying praises to God. Oh, this is very beautiful. That's called prayer. Prayer. Prayer means what? You offer yourself up to the Creator. I mean, it's not, it's not such a big thing. In America, they have all these rock and roll songs, right? So they have the, you know, the, the, the guy is going crazy for this girl. That he's, his, 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 my heart is going out. Right? Great. And she's singing, oh, I'm longing for you. I'm longing for you. So instead of longing for this stupid things and singing a song about it at least sing a song about something that's really real right he's singing a song that he's longing for to be closer to the creator of the universe he's longing to make this world a perfect place right he's longing that there should be in this world revealed goodness and health and beauty but what did king david work at he wasn't praying all the time he was working at Pinimut the Torah, the inside of the Torah. What does it mean, the inside of the Torah? The secrets of the Torah. Okay, Yonah. Do it after. And in this, King David wanted to purify the world. The tefillah, what is prayer? Prayer is birur vala 
Prayer is purifying, raising up, making the world a vessel, making yourself empty. All I have is you, God. Help me, Hashem. I need you. I love you. I'm praising you. That's called raising up from below to above. Now it says that's called avodah. Okay, Yon, are you with me? Yon, it says the, the, there's, the world stands on three things. Torah, va'avoda, v'gemilat chasedim. Torah is pretty clear. You know, you learn the Torah. Gamil chasadim means you give charity, right? You're learning Torah, you have that's good. What is avoda? What is avoda? Avoda means work. <clears throat> oh, it means you got to go out and get a job, you got to work. It says that's what the world stands on. There's 8 billion people in the world, they're all working, uh, they're looking for jobs anyway. <clears throat> right? They're working. They should be working. The avoda doesn't mean that. Avoda means prayer. In the time of the Beit HaMikdash, especially, it was the sacrifices. But it means prayer. Why why is prayer called avodah? Avodah means that you fix something. You work something. You're you're working on yourself. You're raising yourself up. The Torah, Amshachat. Prayer is going up. Torah is coming down. You can turn, take a short break.